I saw a fish roll about 30 yards out. It's the first one I've seen in weeks, you know. And we look, mate, you know, I don't like bigging myself up or anything, but I worked on that late. Like, and I was full-time job, you know, and I was down there a lot of nights and weekends and I put some time, you know, some time and effort into that. Anyway, I saw this fish roll again and I just thought, oh, it's a mirror, you know. And I saw it as a mirror. I never thought what one it would be. I thought, right, that'll do me. Anyway, this particular swim was one of the very few parts of the lake that at the right time of year you could cast to. Uh, it, it was just, the, it was a sandier bottom. So just think the think the weed grew there, but um, it, when you got the big winds, it just popped up and moved off sort of thing. You know? Anyway, I went home and I said to Al, well, I phoned him up and I said, oh, I, I didn't tell him I'd seen a fish. Um, you wouldn't, would you? Um, but he, he had no intention of fishing it. He didn't, you know, genuinely. And we were, you know, friends, you know. And I said, look, mate, I'm going to go down there. I said, it's pointless going out in the boat, but I'm going to drop in that swim that, you know, you've been putting some time in. And uh, he said, yeah, fine, like, you know. And he actually said, like, don't catch the big one. <laughs> I said, no, nah, mate, of course, like, you know. Um, yeah, I know. Talk about fate. I've got him to thank for that, you know. Great angler, Alan. Mm. Really, really great mm. angler. Um, anyway, rolled up. Uh, I'd taken, it was bank holiday weekend, end of August. I'd taken some time off like you do as car anglers, so you beat everyone else down there. Well, I never had to beat anyone else down there, but it was just getting that nice extended few days, you know, and you beat the, you don't get caught in the bank holiday traffic and, you know, we all know the score. Uh, I'd gone down there and the whole, the weed was, had blown in. It was a south southwesterly, so it was blowing in sort of just to that bank. It was covering the swim. I tried to get a rod rest and that, flicking about a bit and all that, which is useless. So I just stripped off, got in the lake and walked as far as I could. Mm -hmm. And I walked the weed to the side. And because I walked the weed to the side, the stuff that was further out, because it was quite deep, would blow in and I'd walk that in, you know. Put the rods out, um, went out there with the boat. Uh, by that time, I'd seen them not spooking off a corn, but they weren't. It was a strange thing. It was almost like they wanted it and they'd hang around and you'd see them, oh, I want to come in and feed. Mm. But if you didn't have the corn there, it was almost like a take it and leave it thing. Mm. Whether uh, on the areas where there was just hemp and that wasn't as visual, didn't mm. pull them in sort of thing, you know. I don't know. But I put hemp and groats out there, but I'd been. we noticed that if it was fish, if fish cleared your spot, they cleared the bloody lot. Didn't matter how much right. you got out there, they cleared the lot. But if it was birds, it had, Go yeah. gradually, you know. Right. Oh, is there a bit gone? A bit gone. They wouldn't leave a bit and bugger off, you know. All this crap I hear about carp leaving bloodworm beds because they want to come back next week. It's just a lot of rubbish. <laughs> they're natural fish, and if there's a load of food there, they're going to eat as much as they bloody can until it's gone, and they'll move on to the next lot. And that's it, right? <laughs> it's nonsense. There you go. It's nonsense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so anyway, yeah, I've been uh, baiting with uh, hemp and. Uh, groats and just a touch and touch when I'm in a touch I'd open a can and I went out in a boat and I spread this far and wide yeah. because I, I didn't know where the clear spots were I was just hoping that it was clear most of this swim and was using long hook links long supple hook links as was everyone back in the day uh, with long I was using multi hairs and I started to use hemp hemp and groats on two hairs purely because uh, the the corn aspect I felt was going against me now. I opened this can of corn. I literally got 20 bits and just sort of went blink, ping, ping, ping whilst I'm drifting in. And that was it. Now I had the rods tucked. The tips were right down in the, right down on the bottom on this sandy shelf because of the weed blowing. You know, you get the weed coming, wipe you out. Game over. Yeah, exactly. The next, the next day it was quite warm. Again, the weed was coming in. I just literally, I just stood there. And uh, I see this little common and, and they were actually over my rod tips, you know, over them. I see this little common and I knew from previous experience, this little common was quite often with the, with the black mirror, you know. But I was fishing, you know, 30, 40 yards out. But anyway, nice to see a fish. I looked down again and it was the big black mirror. <laughs> it, it was probably over about my third or fourth eye. <laughs> oh god <laughs> and I'm standing there was a step down to this bank and you had to sort of you know big jump up it and I stood there and I remember seeing it and it 
and it it was it was moving around and it was almost like it was you know it was sh sauntering and like it knew it was the king and so like you mock, ain't catching you or oh, something. it was yeah. it, it it did you know it was being fished for well i don't know i mean it was over my rods i don't think it knew <laughs> i was there it was actually swimming over the top of my rods and i just that's awesome isn't I, it? I actually just went mm. i'm gonna catch you <laughs> and it didn't see me or whatever but because of shallow water it, it just disappeared you know anyway the weather forecast for that for that night for that weekend was your typical bank holiday weekend it was atrocious right and i mean winds and rain and blah de blah and i knew this um and uh i battened down the hatches 45 and you know a 45 inch umbrella with me little bed chair tucked underneath it and all that and i I made sure that everything was down. And when I went to bed that night, I looked looked at the sky and the winds, although it wasn't windy at ground level, as it were, the winds were whipping, whipping, you know, the clouds were whipping across the sky. And it's always a sign that you've got a front coming. It's coming, you know. yeah. The, mm. the weatherman never normally gets the weather wrong. They get mm. the timing wrong. But anyway, they've mm. got it spot on. Anyway, I woke up in the morning. It had been clattering with rain. I'd been drifting in and out of sleep. I woke up in the morning and there was all Canadian dripping, you know, hanging from me buzzers and it, it was, oh, and there was all <laughs> lot weed over me, a big mat of weed over me rod tops where it had blown in. <laughs> Misery. And the the, the waves were actually coming in and as they get to the bank, they'd roll in over mm. the rod tops mm. and every time they'd roll over the rod tops, it'd obviously catch the line by the buzzers. So every time the, every time the, every time it rolled in, the, the buzzers, the indicators jumped up it went beep, oh, beep, nightmare. beep, like that. and it was pissing down. And I, my brolly had blown in at the end, so the top of my sleeping bag was wet, bottom of my sleeping bag was wet. It was about seven in the morning, uh, it's still quite dark, and it was always, you know, there's a canopy of trees and that. And I just oh, I had enough of it. This is shocking. <laughs> you know, this is, I'm not enjoying this. Do you know what I mean? As much I'm going home. I'm on my own. There's no one to talk to. No one else on the lake. It's probably not another angler for a couple of miles. You know, I've had enough. So because it was raining, I thought I'm not packing up in here. So I just literally curled myself up in the middle of my bed chair, just feeling really sorry for myself. <laughs> you know, it was horrible. You know, we've all been there as anglers. We know it. We, well, know we didn't that. have kit now. We didn't have the kit, did we? Well, I, was, I was comfortable, but I was wet. <laughs> but you know, when you're in a sleeping bag and you're yeah. wet, it can almost feel quite comfortable, sort of. I don't you know. don't want to you, move, not, do you? You're not cold. That yeah. sounds grim to me. No, mate. but you're, you're wet, <laughs> no, but you're warm. Grim. You're yeah. wet, but you're warm. So yeah. I just curled up and I thought, once it stops, I'm going home. Anyway, I'm sort of drifting in and out of sleep and I've got, I'm literally under the bag because the mozzies ran here. Honestly, I'll, I'll get mullered by them. But ran out of murder, you know, so wet and that. And all the, the indicator going, beep, 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 beep. And look, <laughs> And you got to remember, this is end of August, right? That's as much of a tank <laughs> as I've had. Honestly, it sounds bad, doesn't it? But, and I'm thinking, because there was nothing else in there. There was no roach, bream or pike. Like, well, there was pike in there, but there was nothing any trouble. When your indicators went, it was generally a cart or a tufty. Um, so I knew that was saying. So I sort of, it grabbed my attention. And I thought, just as I put my head out of the bag, like, I thought, yeah, that was something then. And then literally, it, it just exploded. The rod tip lifted out because they were at such an angle. The rod lifted Brilliant. up, yeah, and we're using. Remember back then, it was um, the, it was state of the art uh, bait runners, but they were little spools. Aero bait runners, arrows, yeah, mm. and they were only little spools, weren't mm. they? So when it zipped off, it was ten times as fast mm. as these big pits. You know, the amount of line leaving the spool, and it zipped off. I was like in a flap because I'd curled up and you know done the bag up like you never normally do. Nothing was going to happen. <laughs> Trying to get out, jumped out. Jumped down this step, and I, the old cliche, like I really was scared to strike, you know, because we did strike back then. <laughs> anyway, I sort of lifted the rod and I got it all the way up, and it went bang. And I thought, Jesus Christ! And it, I, did, I just had my hand over the spool, just took my hand off, and it was going, it was going, 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 going. And I just thought to myself, past where I was fishing was just the, it was a forest. It would have been like fishing into a forest, mm, you know. Mm. And it was just going out, 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 out. There's one way this fish is going. So I jumped up the step. I just immediately thought, I've got to get as much line out of the water as I can as I've had it. Jumped up this step, got the rod up, 
And out in the waves, I'd stopped it, it stopped. And out in the waves, I could see these flat spots and all that. And I'd known from, from fishing other pits and that sort of thing, but fishing from Thames as well, that fish hadn't, that fish that are uncaught quite often hit the surface. They ain't got a clue what's going on. They don't know what's going on. So they bolt. And the, the next thing they do is come to the surface. And remember, we weren't dropping leads and lead clips and all that back then. Anyway, it's hitting the surface. And I think, Christ, that is it's over the biggest weed beds in the lake, you know. And I'm thinking, right, I've got to be careful here. I don't want to just start hauling it, you know, sort of frightening it. I just gently ease it back. And the old wind in the lines going, wee! <laughs> the rain's hitting me face and all that. And anyway, I pulled it back, pulled it back. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, so I'm getting, I'm going in back line here. I'm going in back line. Probably got sort of over to the spot, 30, 30 yards or whatever it was. And it just decided to go left. And it went left. And it went left. And it went left. It went left. And it just kept going left. And at that time, I'm up this bank. I've got all bushes in that there. My line's going to go through these trees in a minute. So I had to jump down. I'm holding the rod out at arm's length and the tip's just banging around and the spool's just spinning. And it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. I'm trying to slow it down. It's not having it. And in the end, I think, right, I'm going to lose it here on the margin snags. You know, I just walked in, just walked into the water. I thought, going home. I'm wet enough as it is. I was wet in my sleeping bag. Now I'm wet. Just walked in the lake and got my rod out. And then again, it got to a certain point. I couldn't see it up the up the edge, and I just kept gaining, gaining line, gaining line. The line singing. I'm getting all weed on the line, and it's coming down. You know, you think it's ten foot out, and it's actually still thirty yards out, and all that. Anyway, suddenly the line's all freed because I suppose because of the the angle, the fish is closer to me. Angle the weeds, the line's freed of weed, and it just sort of started to chug past me. We're out in the lake and I've grabbed the net and all that. I can't, I haven't seen it. And it's chugged past me and literally right in front of me at sort of one and a half rod lengths distance, it rolled. But it rolled like it was going to have a feed. That, that was, but that was the, that looked like the impact that I was having on it, you know, playing. <laughs> no impact. Exactly. Almost like, oh, here we go, you know. And it rolled and it rolled and it come out. And my, my, I remember my initial thought is a mirror. I never. <laughs> And then the tail come out and I knew which one it was. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God. You know, the other rods I'd already, I think I'd already yanked them and just thrown them up in the bushes and all that, just get them out. You know, any, I don't want to lose it because of my gear sort of thing. Anyway, a few up and down again and all that, like, you know, and it went out for me and it stopped. I managed to turn it, come back down. And I remember I couldn't, I couldn't hold the net out in front of me because of the waves. Every time I let go of it to sort of wind, the net, chugged off you know to the side so I'm sort of holding it pushed the net down and it was in and I honestly I just looked I threw the rod up the bank I just looked inside and it was just like <laughs> that is yeah. a, what a story just, and honestly I was on my own there wasn't an angler on the lake there, there wasn't an angler on the other two lakes that you know bank holiday weekend and it was just oh my god I've got it, it, it the weight honestly the weight was absolutely immaterial never come into my head and I laid her down and it was the most calmest carp yeah it was that one that was it unbelievable I laid it down and she just laid there and I know I don't like saying it I, I've got a lot of friends outside of angling but she had the prettiest face of a carp that I've ever seen you know? really really pretty carp yeah yeah Jason, I've just got to, mate, that was a wicked story, yeah. that. Well, mate, it was, honestly, that's exactly how it happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it's, I'll, I'll never, never, ever forget it, mate. Do you notice the way these guys are so good at reliving those stories But that's what well. I mean. I felt, that's, I felt that's like how, I was there on that bank with you, yeah. watching you, mate, just well told. That was a brilliant It was uh, ne never to be, I mean, for me, you know, I never, I never thought it. it but I mean, that, that was like, so, I mean, that was the biggest carp in the country that had been caught for, for, you know a decade uh no i don't think it was i think Ma right. i think mary so, sorry Ma mary had been caught mary, just before no, mary had been caught the year before i think yeah which i i was so pleased about because there was things started to say you know the mirror was coming into conversation was mary about 49 it wasn't 50 no then, was no it? no it wasn't even that big i think it was 45 when pete mm -hmm. caught it first and mm -hmm. how big was that jace uh that was 46.4 wow. I, I weighed it yeah. and it just went zzz, dong. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, I, f I almost I know forgot, you said you got your, 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 your new Rubens or something. I bought some you new needed Rubens. the right scales for that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I bought some uh, new Rubens. I'd actually bought them off Pete 
uh, Pete Bond. Um, and I'd had them all refurbished and everything because uh, the hook was a bit rusty and all that. And I'd sent them off to Rubens and they'd done it all. And, and uh, yeah, I, I hadn't caught a bloody fish to weigh on them. Uh, well, you, 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 I mean? you christened them well. And I just, I hoisted it up. I had a little bar and I hoisted it up and all that. And I just thought, Christ almighty, 46 pound. And my, my first... I just thought no one's going to believe me. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we were talking about this before, weren't we? If you're going to put that into pers- you can't put it into perspective now, can you? Because no, I mean, it's Chris Ball said to me oh, a long time afterwards, and he knows everything about fish, carp fishing, the walking encyclopedia that he is. Mm. He said to me, it was the fourth, I think it was the f- fourth biggest mm. carp ever caught in this country, mm. um, but it was the biggest unknown carp. Uh, I think I'm right in saying it. it was at the time, I think.